What up y'all, this is Patrick Hayes and I'm here with Bridget Nielsen and Sam Osmanagic. We're here at the Bosnian Pyramid, which is an amazing discovery that Sam discovered about 14 years ago that is completely revolutionizing our understanding of history as well as our understanding of science and technology. And so we wanted to get Sam here on the camera to talk a little bit about his discovery and some of the magical things that are happening here. Now, Bridget and I have been here for about a week and we've been having profound experiences and the energetic and spiritual connection that we've been feeling here is absolutely profound. So, um, Bridget, did you want to talk a little bit about your experiences and then we can start, you know, asking some questions about, you know, how this is shifting? Yeah, it, it's been profound, especially, obviously, in the tunnels, um, what we've been experiencing, uh, which I think we'll go into. Um, but we wanted to start by talking about this, this pyramid complex's um, effect on the history of humanity because it's been amazing that such things as ancient aliens or Graham Hancock kind of like breaking up the cultural narrative and planting the seeds um, of, of history and what it was and what um, it can be and kind of expanding and reprogramming our minds but this kind of takes it to a whole other level and so how does this affect the story and history of humanity the technology the meaning of life like who we are as humans Almost everything they teach us about the ancient history is wrong. Yeah. The origin of man, civilizations, and pyramids. What we have with the Bosnian pyramid discovery are the first pyramids in Europe, the biggest on the planet, the best quality concrete that covers the Bosnian pyramids, the most precise orientation to the north. We have the most extensive prehistorical underground tunnel network and above all, the oldest pyramids ever, over 3,000 years old. Officially, history started with the Sumerians 6,000 years back, then Babylon, Akkad, Assyria, ancient Hittites, ancient Egypt, ancient India, 5,000 years. This is just the last civilization cycle. Before this one, there was another one, which ended 11,500 years back. And another one, 18,000. And another one, 32,000, 55,000, 75,000. So the history of humanity is not evolution, but cycle after cycle after cycle. This is a huge change in a way that we view the ancient history. What we are proving here is that we have the pyramid complex that belongs to the several cycles before existing one. But that's only the one thing. Another one, as uh, we've been programmed in schools to think about the pyramids, Egypt, pharaohs, tombs, we need to forget that. Or Mexico, places to sacrifice the enemies, forget that. We've been defining pyramid in a very scientific way. The pyramids are energy machines or more precisely, the pyramids are huge energy amplifiers. They amplify the existing natural energy sources. Electromagnetic fields that, gener that is generated by the you know, huge iron plates. Then we have water stream, negative ions, second water stream, electricity, a lot of quartz crystal, which transforms electromagnetic field to the ultrasound, level of organ energy reaching 100%, contaminated series about 25%. So now we realize that ancients were so smart, they knew that the most powerful geometrical shape in nature is four-sided pyramid, mm. which amplifies existing natural sources. And if you use elements of sacred geometry, for example, equilateral triangle. In our case, pyramids of sun, moon, dragon, they form equilateral triangle. When you have elements of sacred geometry, they also amplify the you know, energy movements. So, the ancients were building pyramids not for one dead body, that's mm -hmm. one of king or pharaohs, but to last generations and generations for living communities. This is a revolutionary view, you know, for the pyramids. That's why this project is so important. The next question, of course, is what this energy was used for. Now, we can see that on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, 
we were able to detect and measure the existence of scalar waves electrical in nature 28 kilohertz frequency which is ideal to transport the energy and information mm -hmm. nikola tesla 120 years ago was using the same frequency of 28 kilohertz mm -hmm. to transport the energy between two cosmic bodies regardless of their distance mm -hmm. so scalar waves on the top of the Boson pyramids so the physicists and the electrical engineers have proved that the second potential purpose of pyramid energy to protect what is the most precious for us mm -hmm. our health so you can see visiting the tunnels staying on the sun pyramid people get better people with asthma they start breathing well people with the high sugar in the blood it gets back to the normal people with the high blood pressure coming back to the normal people with very serious diseases they can see significant health improvement so it's very logical you use the pyramid energy for the major stuff in your life in our case self-healing mm -hmm. number three the water that we've been discovering in the pyramid tunnels has improved molecular structure this water vibrates high not only that it is uh, healthy in a sense no viruses no bacteria ph is excellent 7.6 but it vibrates high it's mm -hmm. a healing water number four food last year we did experiments with the seeds of beans we put some in the tunnels on the pyramids and the third one was control group from the store after 10 days of incubation we could see the big difference between the one from the store one from the store about 60 percent of the seeds start growing 100 percent of the pyramids started growing and then during the growth from may to end of august the seeds that were exposed to the period of energy they would grow much quicker richer healthier so pyramid energy affecting the food we have machine to measure the human auric field stress level chakras their balance in the last two and a half years we have measured 1400 people and guess what in more than 95 percent people had improved auric field reduced stress level chakras were coming back to the balance and they would open much more meaning the energy would flow better in our body and finally energy in the cells which help us fight diseases was also improved so obviously the pyramid energy affects everything and anything so these are some of the revolutionary investigation that we have done here and not only that even it affects us mentally spiritually also because we could see really major changes in some of the people that would come here so now we are you know at the threshold of the new science the pyramid science and we are the first one who is actually advancing this new science mm, absolutely and then the, this is also then revolutionizing bioarchitecture so you may have heard people talk about cities being like a cancerous tumor on the planet and they're pretty accurate because with all of the 90 degree angles and electromagnetic radiation and uh, destruction that is being embedded into the physical earth is very much like a cancer on the earth so a lot of people have this kind of romanticized idea of moving back in time and getting away from building anything and just kind of living in nature and you have this kind of you know mentality but actually this is showing us how we can move forward we can actually use our intelligence as humans to create bioresonant structures that actually enhance the intention that nature already had. So we become actual extensions of nature as opposed to blockers of nature. And that's one of the things I find is so profound about this. Now, how are you moving into this? How are you teaching people and empowering them to bring this kind of technology into their lives? You see, Patrick, 14 years ago, back in 2005-2006, when we discovered the pyramids, we started it as the archaeological project, digging, removing the soil from the sun pyramid, exposing oldest and best quality concrete blocks, discovering the tunnels, clearing them, putting the wooden support, moving towards the pyramid. That was archaeology. We very soon realized archaeology is not enough to explain what we have here. That's why we started adding a number of classical sciences, 
geology, pedology, paleontology, biology, then high tech like geothermal, georadar, geophysical analysis, radiocarbon dating. That was enough. That was not enough. So basically, multidisciplinary scientific approach was still not enough. Then we added a new aspect, energy aspect. Physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers helped us to realize we had you know, energy complex here. But this energy affects us spiritually. We had a spiritual aspect. It affects us in a healing sense. Healing. So we have those five aspects. And we said, well, it is not enough. Just near to the Rane tunnels, and we are about 50 meters from, from the entrance, we started buying properties below us, and uh, we purchased about 15 properties, more than 60,000 square meters. That was swamp, neglected, you know, uh, trash everywhere. We started clearing it, water drainage, planted the grass, clearing the forest, and we have transformed that neglected land to one of the most beautiful parks in Europe. It's energy park, it's recreational park, it's botanical park, natural park, park with the culture and art, park where we show connection between the stone and underground energy flows, underground water flows, how to neutralize negative energy from underground water flows. So basically, we started teaching people so this park is also educational park. So they're teaching them about the energy, about you know the nature. We started having lectures on nutritionism, on healthy way of living. So this project, which started as archaeological project, is really ending as the project that uh, will offer completely new future to humanity because our future is not 5G or artificial intelligence dominating our lives so we need to go back to the nature we need to live in the harmony with the nature one of our installation is called hug the tree show him your love that's why um, i would say people come they feel this they feel sincerity they go to the park where i forbid telecom company to come and bring the wi-fi and other stuff so now they can enjoy, they can become a part of the nature again. And like you said, you mentioned uh, bad electromagnetism in the cities, they are contaminated, they are polluted. In our case, you go to the tunnels, there is no bad cosmic harmful radiation. There is no Wi-Fi service, there is no uh, signal for the, our uh, you know, mobile phones, our cell phones. There is no negative energy coming from the underground. Plus, there are pyramid energies, the best electromagnetic field, the best ultrasound field, the best uh, original Schumann resonance of 7.83 Hz. So obviously, somebody in distant past did uh, make a beautiful project above and under the ground. And here we are to learn from them. I realize that there are a lot of people, especially from the cultural establishment, opposing the idea that pyramids were built in Bosnia, of all countries. And secondly, that uh, those pyramids are the oldest on the planet. Well, what we have here is uh, the project that will not only change our past, but this is the place where we should use our short life spans. So we can apply this knowledge from the past and help our civilization to live better life in the future. Absolutely. And that's absolutely what we've been experiencing here also, this convergence of so many different cultures. And uh, the education and edification of many different um, seemingly disparate aspects of humanity. And, um, you know, I know Bridget and I have both been feeling extremely um, intense and profound uh, energetic phenomenon here. And I want to ask you a little bit, Bridget, what your experience has been being in a place where there's so many different people that are starting to share the same language, that are starting to understand something about our past, about some sort of intuitive and um, natural connection that we have to Earth that can be exemplified by the way that we live and enhanced by um, the kind of community generation that is being generated here. 
Yeah, as being very intuitive and psychic and having some of these abilities, it's going to other sites, you know, around the world where farmers built it 4,500 years ago with rope. You know, it, 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 the, having that narrative imprint has been limiting. But coming here and seeing like hundreds of children over the past week getting to just like play in these like sacred spaces and on the playground and then the education system that you've created too. Literally it's like my, my inner child is personally so excited because I would have loved to understand this because I can feel it. But it's created for me a profound freedom because you have created this space that's open, that's open. Like it's still mysterious but things are being discovered but it's um, fully available for anyone to kind of tap in and to explore and to expand in any capacity in which they want and to collaborate in any way that they would like. And so having that field available just makes it so much easier to, to tap in. And, and for us, we've been having profound he energy healings and having all this like plasma that we've been playing with in the tunnels and putting it into each other and con connecting with different beings and different places and energies. And so it's been uh, really, really profound, but I, I definitely um, put that together with the, the intention that you and everyone here is holding, which isn't available in these other spaces. So I thank you for that. Isn't it beautiful that you can enjoy the most open yeah. project in the world? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go to other places. I mean, it's always something strictly confidential. Mm -hmm. Did they find below the left corner of the Sphinx in Egypt? Confidential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chinese pyramids? Confidential. Why is it confidential? This is the knowledge that belongs to all of us. It's cultural heritage of the planet. There's a reason why, from the very beginning, we said the Bosnian Pyramid Project will be the most open project in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why I invite professionals and non-professionals to come and join us. In the last 10 years only, we had more than 3,450 volunteers from 63 countries. The other day, we had a guy from New Caledonia. I mean, New, what is New Caledonia? <laughs> if you are to dig from here and go to the center of the planet and get on the other side, somewhere near New Zealand and Pacific Islands, that would be close to New Caledonia. People heard about it. And I'm so proud of those guys that are coming here. So we offer opportunity to people to become part of the, not only digging, part of discovery. People discover artifacts, people discover organic materials, people discover the oldest concrete blocks in the planet, people discover, you know, prehistorical tunnels where human food hasn't been for thousands and thousands of years. We are the only one in the world who, of course, under expert supervision, offer that to the non-professionals. And I think you've been part also of that, uh, the process of digging. So I think that this beautiful and people feel this is the right place. And this is the right thing to do in the world of science. Absolutely. And we're sitting in the, I was sitting and meditating in the tunnels the other day. And you had walked by and the lights were on. And you're like, do you want the lights off? And you just turn off the lights and like let let us be in like these these spaces where in uh, the other spaces you might not even be allowed to meditate. Mm -hmm. So you really created that. When it comes to meditating, in the last three years, meditation has been forbid in Egypt mm -hmm. yeah. on Egyptian temples and pyramids. Like what? Last year, <laughs> That's what they're for. the same thing in Peru. Yeah. Why is it forbidden? Because the governments fear free people. You close your eyes, you relax, you go deep within. You have unlimited space. Then basically what you can do, you can get all the knowledge that you need. And you feel inner freedom. Governments do not want us to have that feeling of freedom. Mm -hmm. and look what we do here in our beautiful park. We have several meditational platforms. So we encourage meditation, we want people to feel this freedom and you are able to see that entrance to our park is for free, parking is for free, installations are for free, so we want to bring freedom back to the people. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, and that's exactly what you're doing, bringing freedom back to the people and you're creating an experiential 
experience that anybody can come and experience. And the, the fact that you're making it available for all these different walks of life to share their two cents about what their experience is and what's going on for them truly is creating a universal evolution in humanity. Because anybody can come here and they can share what their experience is in their own language and that can be added to the success that we're having here. And what that does is that creates an environment where it's not just the scientists that are interested in it. It's not just the mystics that are interested in it. Um, but the common people can come and experience this. And then they can learn science and they can learn mystical stuff. And then the mystic traditions and the scientists can start sharing language and start merging themselves. So it's, it's actually really this melting pot of cultures of humanity in general. I feel like this is a microcosm for the entire planet because literally it's open for anyone to come and be a part